Even share with us. He is from Sinai. Uh, he has this impressive uh, vite, as they call it, vite. Okay. Uh, impressive resume. Let me just use the term I know. <laughs> and, 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 and it's he, he's published, he has lectured, um, and he sits on several committees, receives several awards, and of course we can see here one of his hobbies is photography, and then so he's going to record himself as he's giving his presentation, amen, but I, I just like this whole scuba diving thing, you know, there's something about um, doing something that's a little extreme, and we just thank God for him. And, and just ask him to come and share with us. So he's going to talk with us today about heart health. Let's receive him warmly today. Thank you, Reverend Jordan, uh, honored guests, and members of the uh, church. I, first of all, I'd like to say I've never seen so many lovely red dresses in one place at one time. But they're not half as lovely as the ladies wearing them. An unknown author once said, a true friend is someone who reaches for your hand but touches your heart. What I would like to do today for Red Dress Sunday is reach out to all of your hearts, not, as, not only as a friend, but also as a cardiologist. I'd like to talk to you today about heart disease. I want to talk to you about what causes heart disease. And I want to talk to you about the things that you can do starting today to prevent yourself from becoming a heart attack victim. Heart disease is one of the biggest killers in the United States today. And unfortunately, the African, there's a high prevalence of heart disease in the African American community. There are seven recognized major risk factors for heart disease. Those risk factors are high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, smoking, tobacco abuse, a family history of heart disease, a sedentary lifestyle, that's lack of exercise, and being overweight, obesity. First of all, hypertension. Hypertension is defined as having a blood pressure greater than 120 over 80. It has been shown that by having a high blood pressure that's uncontrolled for an extended period of time, it can cause damage to the blood vessels of the body. If you have damage to the blood vessels of the heart, that can cause a heart attack. If you have damage to the blood vessels of the brain, that can cause a stroke. Damage to the kidneys by high blood pressure can lead to kidney failure and dialysis. And damage to the blood vessels of the eyes can cause blindness. Now, we all know that there are a lot of medications for blood pressure, but there are lifestyle changes that we can all make to lower our blood pressure. Those lifestyle changes include diet, exercise, and weight loss. Now, what is a healthy diet for someone who has high blood pressure? A healthy diet for blood pressure is a diet that's low in sodium and high in potassium. It has been shown that if someone has a lot of sodium in their bloodstream or salt, then that can draw fluid into the bloodstream and lead to high blood pressure. So the treatment or the thing that everyone can do is not put any salt in their food. And I have a lot of my patients tell me, oh, well, you know, I like eating salt, I'm just eating salt. What's the littlest amount of salt that I can put in to my diet and not get high blood pressure? And my answer to them is zero, none. You should not add any salt to your food. And I know it tastes different, and I know all of our diets, American diet has a lot of salt in it, but if you have high blood pressure, you just have to get used to eating without salt. It's that simple. And also, if you eat any foods that uh, 
from packages or cans. You have to look at the labels for the sodium or salt and have as little as possible. Alternatively, it's good to have potassium in your diet. Potassium has been shown to relax the blood vessels and to reduce high blood pressure. So foods that are high in potassium include fruits and vegetables. So the bottom line in terms of diet is you want to eat foods that are low in sodium and high in potassium. The other major lifestyle change that can be made, made to reduce your blood pressure is exercise. And it has been shown that if you exercise at least three times a week, or at least 30 minutes, that can reduce blood pressure. And it doesn't even have to be vigorous exercise. Just walking, any kind of exercise, three times a week, can reduce blood pressure. And lastly, weight loss. It's been shown that if someone is overweight, if they lose weight, that that can reduce blood pressure. So those are three lifestyle changes. The other major risk factor for heart disease is diabetes. <laughs> diabetes, high blood sugar, high glucose, has been shown to have a damaging effect on the arteries of the body, causing heart attacks and stroke. So if you have diabetes, it's important to have your blood sugar well controlled by diet and by medication. The other major risk factor is high cholesterol. High cholesterol, if you have high cholesterol for an extended period of time, the cholesterol can build up on the inside of the arteries and cause blockages. Those blockages can lead to heart attacks and strokes. So if you have high cholesterol, it's important to eat a low cholesterol diet. And if that doesn't work, then you have to use medications for cholesterol. The medications for cholesterol have been found to be very effective in reducing heart attacks. The other major risk factor is smoking, tobacco abuse. And I don't have to tell anyone in this room that smoking is bad for you. Cigarette smoke contains a lot of dangerous chemicals. The most dangerous one is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is the same gas that comes out of your car. So, if you're smoking cigarettes, it's like you're sucking on the tailpipe of a car. <clears throat> and that has a toxic effect to our arteries and causes heart attacks. Cigarette smoke also contains nicotine, which unfortunately is very addictive, but also causes the blood vessels in the body to squeeze down and spasm, reducing the amount of blood to the heart, causing a heart attack. Thirdly, Cigarette smoke causes the blood itself to thicken, resulting in high blood pressure, and also for, it also causes blood clots to form in the body, also resulting in heart attacks. So cigarette smoking is bad. A family history of heart disease. Unfortunately, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. If your parents have heart disease, it's very likely that you're gonna have it too. So it's important to see a doctor and have some preliminary testing like a stress test to make sure that you don't have any underlying heart disease. Sedentary lifestyle, as I mentioned earlier, it's important to exercise at least three times a week. Exercising has been shown not only to reduce the risk of high blood pressure, but also to reduce the risk of heart disease. And finally, being overweight, obesity. Obesity has been associated with diabetes, has been associated with high blood pressure, and also has been associated with a higher risk of heart attacks. So it's important to get down to the normal weight for your height. So in summary, the seven risk factors for heart disease are hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, cigarette smoking, a family history of heart disease, sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise, and being overweight. And the lifestyle changes that can help your blood pressure and your heart are diet, diet low in sodium, high in potassium, exercise at least three times a week, and weight loss. Another own, unknown author once said, you may hold my hand for a while, but you hold my heart forever. So it is my hope that today, the information I've given you, you will keep with you forever and pass it along to your friends and family so that you and your loved ones can reduce the risk of having a heart attack. Thank you. Thank you.